4G. IT. 4G IT security experts. Secure Ninja. Hi, it's Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV. I'm here in Las Vegas, Nevada at Black Hat 2012, and I'm speaking with Josh Thomas, also known as Monk. He is a breaker of things at the MITRE Corporation. Now, Josh, that is a very interesting title. What exact sort of things do you break? Uh, I tend to look at both software and hardware um, to ensure that they are secure. Mm -hmm. And basically, my, my main focus over the past couple of years is just to see how we can reuse what's already out in the market mm -hmm. um, for new and novel things that uh, situations outside of the hardware are broken. Can we make this hardware, can we reuse it to actually fix solutions? Okay. Um, so you break to see if it can be fixed? Yes. That makes sense. It's good to hear that you're a fixer of things, too, then. <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> Occasionally. Um, um, now, you're going to be presenting at DEF CON tomorrow. That's correct. What exactly are you going to present? Um, I'm going to be presenting mesh networks uh, with Android phones. It's a project called SPAN, which is smartphone ad hoc networking. Uh, basically, a friend of mine and I sat down last year and noticed that for every big event that's gone on in the world for the past 10 years, um, the cellular network dies. So Katrina, the cellular network died. Mm -hmm. um, Haiti, the cellular network died. Fukushima, the cellular network died. Um, and that really, really sucks. People can't call their families to say, hey, I'm OK. Mm -hmm. uh, emergency responders can't actually communicate with each other to figure out what's going on and uh, go help people. It, it, it's a huge, huge problem. Um, and it's not really, it's not the fault of the cell phone manufacturers because, I mean, their towers are there and either their towers get destroyed or they just go over capacity. Um, so we set out to fix that and we were wondering how to do it. Um, what it came down to this year is we took standard Android phones that you can go buy at uh, any store mm -hmm. and routed them, installed some custom software on there, and basically we... Uh, hijack the Wi-Fi chip that's built into the phone and turn it into just a pure ad hoc mode. So any two phones can now connect with each other, any three phones can now connect with each other. And we create this, this very um, dynamic mesh network of just all these phones talking to each other. So now, instead of every single phone be having to be connected to a cell tower or the internet to be able to make a call, as long as one phone has a connection, I can bridge through 20 other phones um, to be able to communicate still with everyone else. Um, if no one has a connection with the cell tower or the internet, I can still communicate inside the mesh itself. I just can't reach outside. Um, so that is, in a nutshell, what we'll be talking about at DEF CON. And that's brand new technology? Uh, there's been two or three other projects over the past couple of years that have attempted it. Mm -hmm. and. Everyone kind of has their different spin on it. There's a project called OLSRD that um, I guess has been in production for about five years now. And it, it's kind of the base of how all this stuff works. Everyone kind of starts with it. And it's, it's functional, um, but we, we weren't happy with it. Um, we wanted something more, and we wanted something that really any end user can install on their phone and just have work. Right. I mean, for this to be functional for emergency responders, you really need to be able to have something downloadable from the App Store that just now my phone is a node in a mesh network. Right. Um, and OLSRD could not support that. There's another project called Batman um, that we are also looking at that we've played with quite a bit. Uh, and we, we feel we can improve on it to some extent. Primarily what we've done, though, is create a framework where any developer can come in and add to our mesh. Mm -hmm. um, what we're releasing open source at the talk tomorrow is, is our framework and our implementation. Um, and it's kind of up to the users to go in and implement security on top of it. Um, I'll be talking about some preliminary ways on how to do that. Um, but. We're really hoping that the community in general kind of latches onto this, like, wow, this is cool, um, and, and starts trying to figure out how to actually secure this. Right. Um, Was it events like Katrina that inspired you to create a solution to this 
problem? It was. It was actually Fukushima. Um, last year there was a, a, a touching YouTube video of, of basically a family that was okay. And it was just a YouTube video of someone trying to call the rest of their family to yeah. say, hey, we're okay. And um, they couldn't do it. I mean, you know, it was like three or four days before people knew what was going on. Um, and that, that just kind of seemed unacceptable. In this day and Absolutely. age, we shouldn't be facing those problems still. Right. And moments where it's most critical for you to have yeah. that cellular service. Yeah, so I mean, that was the basic impetus. Since then, we've, we've, we've taken the, we've done some live demos around the United States with it. Um, the last one we did was actually handing out cell phones to the police department in Kansas City during the uh, Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Mm -hmm. um, because again, you've got a similar situation. You've got 65,000 people in a very condensed area. Your cell networks, um, amazingly, they stayed up this time. Uh, but that was because Sprint and AT&T and Verizon were all out there setting up secondary networks because there's just so many right. people. Um, but we allowed the police department to have their own kind of private mesh network when they were um, doing patrols in the parking lot just to make sure there was nothing going on. Um, and it, so it was kind of a backup network that ended up uh, working very well. Um, did better than we expected it to actually. So Right. So how big of a situation or how many people does it take to cause the cellular network to go down? I mean, it depends on what country. It depends on, on a lot of factors. Um, cell towers in general from my understanding, tend to be designed to handle about 80% capacity of um, all the users in that geographic region. Mm -hmm. So if you have more than 80% of the people in an area trying to make a phone call, there's a possibility um, that they could die, uh, at least temporarily. LTE and some of the new technologies are improving that. Um, but there's still that possibility, and especially when you get in more remote regions like Haiti, yeah. uh, there, there's, the infrastructure really isn't there uh, as much. So uh, again, kind of our mentality is, why do we need to always rely on an infrastructure during times of crisis? Um, infrastructures, they're a single point of failure. I mean, if there's one thing that is keeping it, allowing everyone to talk to each other and that thing breaks, it sucks. So right. why, why are we always relying on that one thing? If it's working, that's awesome. Um, if not, let's have a backup plan. Right, so the SPAN technology is the backup. How does, uh, how's the usability on that? Is it easy to get that into people's hands? So basically, um, at a technical level, the, it's just a daemon that installs on the phone and runs in the background. Okay. And then any application that you already have on your phone um, Facebook, voice over IP, chat, um, anything that you would normally have already installed on your phone just works because it's talking to the Android networking stack that's already built into the phone. Um, we're injecting under that. So as far as all your other apps are concerned, they're still talking to the network. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be my network now. Um, and, and so assuming you can install it, um, which should just be a couple clicks off the App Store once someone puts it up there. Yeah. Um, it'll just work. Well, it sounds like a wonderful and potentially life-saving technology. Thank you. In the event of another disaster, so it's a good thing, and I hope it I hope it works out and gets into the hands of the people who need it. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Secure Ninja Shorts are brought to you by SecureNinja.com a world leader in information security and IT training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. SecureNinja.com, forging IT security experts. Yeah!